everyone and welcome to I guess Love Commercial Property. Given that most of you are in training contract hunting season, I know I've been there, I know how it feels guys, I really feel it for you. Um, I thought that it would be a good idea to share with you how I secure a training contract with a speculative application. When I was at law school doing the GDL, I made about 15 training contracts applications. At that time, we were told that fewer is better because um, then you make sure that the application is tailored. I think you should send as many applications as you can, as long as you do your research properly and tailor the application to a law firm you are applying to. Um, being a law student, as you know, is very difficult, so being organized is key. And I think it's possible to send at least 25 applications throughout the academic year. Um, training contracts are hard to come by and a majority of law firms fill their um, training contracts placements two years in advance. So make, uh, so guys, make the most of it, especially when you have just embarked on the GDL and you do not have long before um, you complete the LPC. I was unsuccessful in those 15 applications and needless to say, I was upset and felt that I would never get a training contract. However, I shook off those negative spots and managed to secure a paralegal role to show my continuing interest in law. I had to move 90 miles for this job though. Um, at the interview, I was told that the law firm did not offer training contracts and had no plans of doing so in the future, but it did not put me off. I mean, I saw working there as a step closer to my goal. I appreciate that it will not be possible for everyone to s secure a paralegal role straight after university or the LPC. Uh, but try to show your interest in law somehow, um, even if it means doing pro bono work. Any legal experience on your CV is a bonus. So how did I secure a training contract? Whilst in my full-time paralegal job, I decided that I would be sending speculative applications to law firms which do not have a prescribed method of applying. So I've updated my CV, I drafted a covering letter which set out my academic background, experience in law, um, reasons for wanting to be a solicitor and reasons for applying to a particular law firm. I did not particularly care where in the UK I would, um, where in the UK my training contract would be um, although my preference was uh, London. As I saw, a training contract is a means of becoming solicitor and not an indicator of where I would spend the rest of my life, if that makes sense. Um, remember that once your training contract is finished, it is possible, guys, to find a job as an NQ in your dream law firm. Therefore, do not limit yourself to your university town or hometown and Think outside the box. Thinking outside the box is key here. So how did I go about sending speculative applications? I first decided on where I would like to live for the next two years, if I got a training contract. Then I decided that I would only apply to medium-sized law firms. Um, it was my personal preference, which was based on my work experience in law firms of different sizes. The search tool I used was the Law Society website. I limited my search to five locations and their surroundings. I went through each and every law firm on the list. I chose 50 law firms out of hundreds and I think it's important to mention that some of them were not looking for a trainee, but I still applied to them. This was a risky exercise, but I like the sound of them so much that I made sure that the covering letter conveyed it and I hope that at least one of them would feel a sudden urge to, um, to have a trainee if they read my heartfelt covering letter. But it clearly worked because um, a law firm in central London got in touch with me and they said that a training contract was a possibility after having worked for them for six months as a paralegal. So, you know, six months is nothing if, if, if at the end of it you're getting your training contract. Around the same time, I got two more invitations to interviews and the law firm I worked for had started planning on recruiting trainees internally. But London was my dream uh, city, so I really wanted the maybe trainee to be enrolled in uh, London. Um, 
I treated the inter interview as a training contract interview and remember how my heart wanted to jump out when I was waiting for the interviewer in the boardroom. I got the job and when I completed the six months, a work colleague of mine and I were offered training contracts. We were the first trainees in the law firm and have paved the way for future trainees. So, you know, those guys had it easy. Um, I have no way saying that my method is a proof method to get uh, a training contract. It is time consuming and you do need to put uh, a lot of effort into your covering letter. But I think it's worth considering and you can also use this method, uh, method alongside the usual methods of uh, applying. I appreciate that this method will not appeal to everyone because it takes city law firms out of the equation, but there is a vast array of great law firms in the country you can train with, uh, which can bring you a step closer to working in a city law firm if you still feel strongly about it at the end of your training contract. I guess what I'm trying to say is do not pull, um, sorry, do not put all your eggs in one basket and accept that things might not go the way you would like. Remember, focus on the main goal. So to summarize, one, apply to as many law firms as you can. Two, ensure applications are tailored. Three, don't be afraid to leave your comfort zone. And four, think outside the box. If you have liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to know when another video comes up. If there is any other topic you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comment section below or by sending me a message. You can also find me on Instagram and you will find the link in the about me section.